Hello, and a very warm welcome to our worship and to this time of blether before the service itself starts. It's very good that you join with us for our area group meeting. It's always a joy to be able to share with our neighbours as we journey together towards the, the future, whatever that future is, it's in God's hands. And we are looking forward to all working together and worshipping together uh, online and who knows what happens in the future. But before we worship God this morning, let's hear what's happening in the, the local congregations. Neil, what's happening in Kintour? Morning, Ewan. Morning, everybody. Um, it's, things are just cracking on. It's Kintour as, as normal. Our, uh, our morning service, including our morning services, including this one, which happens on our website. Uh, we're still meeting regularly on Zoom at uh, 10 a.m. On, uh, on a Sunday morning. And we have a, uh, a Bible chat that happens on a Sunday evening. Uh, which you're more than welcome to to join us uh, for that and also we have a conversation on a on a friday morning well it's more of an open blether it's kind of like a a coffee shop online so if you'd like to find out any more of uh, about any of those please do check our website for more details thank you and sheila what's happening next in midmar Things are, are going along in Efton Midmar fine, Yoon, thanks. We've got the Women's Fellowship Group up and running, and of course everything is on Zoom at the present moment, so if anybody would like to join, they would be more than welcome. Um, it's a chat, it's a bit of book review, it's a bit of conversation, it's a bit of debate, and that's every fortnight. And we have a monthly book club as well. And again, there's details on the church website. And the website also has some kids' activities, including our spring gardens, which are appearing in windows around about the village, the snow. So there's information there if anybody's interested. Thank you. I hope all that goes well. And Fiona, what's happening in Kenny? Do you have an update? Yeah, so in Kemney, um, if you missed Kemney Kids this morning, just before the uh, service, then you can always catch up on YouTube afterwards. Um, we also have our blether at 11 o'clock, so our Zoom blether just straight after this, or almost straight after this service. You can grab your cup of coffee and uh, catch up with some of the folk at Kemney Kirk. Um, on a Sunday evening, there is a, a live um, Facebook Live service uh, which is a bit more meditative, meditative, a little bit quieter. And there's also a couple of uh, Bible studies during the week on uh, Monday and Wednesday evenings. So still lots going on in Kenya. Thank you. Busy time. We are at Clooney and Money Musk. We have just started a Bible study on the book of Psalms. It's going to be every fortnight. So there's not one this coming week. It'll be the following Thursday night. But that's all recorded and online for people to look at, we hope in a few weeks time to be able to have a live chat on Zoom, but information will be circulated in due course. Next Sunday, at uh, Clooney and Money Musk, as part of our Fair Trade Fortnight work, we are going to have a service of uh, put online for Fair Trade Fortnight using videos from the Fair Trade organization. So that's something to look forward to for us, because it means I won't be on the screen as much as normal. So that's always a blessing for some folk. But Fair Trade Fortnight, we're in the middle of it, so we would encourage you to participate uh, in any way you can through the Fair Trade movement. There's one, I'm, I'm wearing another hat now, and this is for all the congregations. It's a presbytery hat that each of our congregations we have been cited to attend for our interest to a special meeting of presbytery that's happening this Tuesday. The, the congregations are sending reps. You don't need to worry about it. We will feed back, but we are told that we are supposed to in, 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 tell the congregations on two Sundays before this meeting that this is happening. So that takes place this uh, Tuesday coming where the Presbytery plan will be discussed. And there has already been meetings of the Presbytery here. Sorry, Sheila, you're going to say something there. <laughs> I didn't mean to, to interrupt you and it suddenly occurred to me though I should have mentioned the World Day of Prayer which is coming up as well on the Friday the 5th of March usually and this year 2021 should have been Echton Midmar's um, year for hosting the World Day of Prayer and for welcoming others from around the presbytery to the service. This year there is a service being held and filmed across the internet 
um, which will be from Edinburgh for the World Day of Prayer. And it will be possible to join that service in real time by Zoom if people are interested. So all the ministers will have a link um, if anybody's interested. And we also have hard copies of the material as well. Again, if anybody would like to reflect on the material this year, it would be good to join together with um, our friends and neighbours from across the country and indeed across the world as well for this important occasion. Thanks, Hugh. Thank you. Thank you for that because I had actually forgotten I was going to say something about it. Uh, so that's excellent. Thank you. So that's the intimations as I would normally say on a Sunday and we are gathered to worship God. So enjoy our service as we worship God together. Thank you. Come if you are hungry, because God longs to feed you. Come if you are searching, because God longs to find you. Come if you are weary, because God longs to give you rest. Come to God, the God of salvation, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's worship God. Let us pray. God of Abraham, we come before you as children of your inheritance. Through the generations, we have numbered more than the sand of the shore and the stars of the sky. We bring you our worship. As we stand in the grace of God, found in Jesus Christ, our Lord, we recognize that we have failed God and our neighbors. We confess we have fallen from the life that is offered to us through the death of Jesus Christ. We acknowledge that the love of God is rescuing us from sin and restoring us to grace. In testing, hardship, and suffering, may we be willing to offer all that we are and all that we have to be followers in the way of Jesus Christ. And so praise the Lord all the earth. A time is surely coming when the poor will be fed, the powerful will bow down, and all creation will know that God is Lord of all. Praise the Lord, all the earth. A time is surely coming when the wise will see him, the peoples will praise him, and the children will serve our Lord God, Lord of all. Praise the Lord, all the earth. Amen. Thank you. 
the word of God. Our first reading today comes from the scripture of the Old Testament from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 17, reading firstly from verses 1 to 7 and then from 15 to 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the almighty God, obey me and always do what is right. I will make my covenant with you and give you many descendants. Abram bowed down his face, touching the ground, and God said, I make this covenant with you. I promise that you will be the ancestor of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, because I'm making you the ancestor of many nations. I will give you many descendants, and some of them will be kings. You will have so many descendants that they will become nations. I will keep my promise to you and to your descendants in future generations as an everlasting covenant. God said to Abraham, you must no longer call your wife Sarah. From now on, her name is Sarah. I will bless her and I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she will become the mother of nations and there will be kings among her descendants. Abraham bowed down with his face touching the ground, but he began to laugh when he thought, can a man have a child when he's a hundred years old? Can Sarah have a child at 90? And we turn now to the New Testament, where our reading for today comes from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 8, reading from verses 31 to 38. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise to life. He made this very clear to them. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Jesus turned around, looked at his disciples, and rebuked Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. Your thoughts don't come from God, but from man. Then Jesus called the crowd and his disciples to him. If anyone wants to come with me, he told them, he must forget self, carry his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Does a person gain anything if he wins the whole world but loses his life? Of course not. There is nothing he can give to regain his life. If a person is ashamed of me and of my teaching in this godless and wicked day, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of our minds and our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are the strength and the redemption of all who place their trust in you. Amen. Well, it's always a real pleasure to take part in these joint services across Presbytery. And as most, if not all of us know, change is certainly afoot here in Gordon Presbytery. In a few days, on Tuesday the 2nd of March to be precise, members of our Presbytery will discuss and vote on a new Presbytery plan. And this plan is meant to be the start of a new vision for how we can hopefully better share in the task of ministry together. Now, in my own experience, change is hardly ever easy. 
sometimes it can be rather bewildering. Change, especially rapid change, can make us feel unsure of our footing. It can make us question where we have been and where we are going. And personally, I find great comfort that the pages of scripture are filled with stories of people and groups who also had to wrestle with the very real challenges of change. In our first reading this morning from Genesis, it's the story of Abram. Abram's whole story is one of radical change. Back in Genesis 12, when Abram was already at the very good age of 75, the Lord called him to begin a brand new journey to an unknown land. The Lord said, go to the land that I will show you. Not the land you know and are comfortable with, but the land I will show you. We know that Abram journeyed for a good long while with his whole family in tow, with Sarah and his servants and extended family. And he eventually came to the land promised by God. And there God established a new covenant with Abram. And today's chapter, chapter 17, tells us that God also gave Abram a new name, Abraham, father of many nations. So a new journey, a new land, a new identity, change all around. But as if this wasn't enough change, God then pushed the envelope even further. In chapter 17, verse 6, he, the Lord said to Abraham, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And then continuing in verse 15, And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. What a grand pronouncement. But then in verse 17, the text tells us that then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? Now, thus far in the story, Abraham, as he was now known, lived a life of faith and dependence on God. But the idea that he would become a father for the first time at the age of 99 and Sarah would become a first-time mother at the age of 90 was simply too much. It was too much. Too much to believe, too much to change, and so <laughs> Abraham laughed. And in chapter 18, we are told that Sarah also laughed when she heard the news, too. Little did they know that their disbelieving laughter would soon turn into joyful laughter with the birth of their son, Isaac. And as we may know, the name Isaac means laughter. This story reminds us of an uncomfortable truth. And that truth is that most of us, like Abraham and Sarah, most of us are comfortable trusting God up to a point. If it makes sense, if we can understand what God is doing, if we can see the value in it, we are usually fine, somewhat, with the next step in the journey. I think it's an entirely different matter when God's plan doesn't make sense, when it can't be understood. This was the case for Abraham and for Sarah, and it was also the case for the Apostle Peter in this morning's reading from Mark's Gospel. At the start of this passage, Mark tells us in verse 31, Jesus began to teach them, them being his disciples, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now, for Peter, and we can assume for the rest of, this, of the disciples as well, God's Messiah was supposed to be this great warrior king who would lead the Jewish people in glorious revolt against foreign occupying powers like Rome of the time. And this Messiah king would then lead the charge in ushering in 
a new golden age for Israel. In other words, the Messiah, the Christ, that's what Christ means, was expected to be a winner. But by telling them that the Messiah was going to endure suffering, rejection, and ultimately death, Jesus completely redefined the role of Messiah. And like Abraham and Sarah before him, it's clear from this text that Peter finally hit a point where he could not accept what he was being told. And so the text tells us he attempted to rebuke Jesus for saying what he said. Oh, to be a fly in the wall for that part of the conversation. Like so many of us, Peter wanted to follow Jesus. He was faithful up to a point, but he also wanted to be faithful on his own terms. And the moment that Jesus said something so unpalatable like the Messiah must suffer and be rejected and be killed, Peter tried to put Jesus back into the messianic mold that he had for him. And Jesus' response to Peter's attempt is, of course, very sobering. Verse 33, but turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of people. Wow. Those are harsh words. And it's worth noting that in this text, Satan is not a proper name. He wasn't suggesting that Peter necessarily had a, a, a tail and horns and a pitchfork as we often think of Satan. Instead, the word Satan can be translated as adversary, opponent, one who stands in the way. And this means that in this instance, Peter's behavior was in opposition to God's will. He was an adversary of Jesus. And this reminds us that even the most faithful disciple like Peter, if we don't keep God's will center in our lives, any one of us can be a Satan to God's will. And after he rebuked Peter, Jesus then declared, If anyone would come after me, let that one deny himself and take up his cross. Follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. This text tells us a hard truth. We cannot be the servant of two masters. We cannot pursue our own agendas and also fully submit to God's will. To be sure, any insight that we are given into God's will is an incredible gift. But often we are not given such insights. We hardly ever fully know what God is up to, if ever. But... Over against that, Jesus does always call us to follow him. And the Lord has done this throughout history with Abraham, with Sarah, throughout the generations. The call is always to follow and to trust. We are called to follow God when life is grand and when life is harsh. We are called to follow when we understand and when we don't understand. In fact, I think the more confused and the more uncertain we become, and it happens to us all, the more this happens, the more then we need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. He is our true anchor, our true north star, our true guide, our true savior, our true Lord. And if we in the Church of Scotland or any other denomination, frankly, if any of us try to make plans for the future without a constant focus on Jesus, then quite frankly, those plans, as grand as they may be, they will not lead us where God is calling us to go. As we move forward, we must focus on obedience more than understanding. We must focus on trusting God more than on getting our own way. And when we, like Abraham, Sarah, and Peter, find ourselves disbelieving or disagreeing with what God seems to be doing, we must remember that God is in the business of doing what we deem to be impossible. God is the one who gave Abraham and Sarah a son in their old age. God is the one who has won redemption for all of us in the death and resurrection of Jesus. 
And so whatever we may face, we are called to trust truly that God is still doing what we deem impossible today. And whatever plans we make, and we must plan, but whatever plans we make, as we make them, as we discern them, as we decide upon them, may we be willing to ultimately follow what God has revealed to us in Jesus. May we always listen for the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we move forward as the church. For this is the only plan that will work. This is the only plan that truly matters. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us once again join together in prayer. Shall we pray? Lord, we are challenged to make a difference in the name of Jesus, to take up our cross and follow him. We give you thanks that your love for each of us is revealed in so many ways. We thank you for our families, for our friends, for those we hold dear. We thank you for all the ways in which your love is shown to us. Help us to be considerate in our actions, thoughtful in our dealings with people, and reflect in our lives your love and concern for all. Help us to be open to see your will and to trust you in the choices we make each day. Lord of the past, the present and the future, breathe on us, breath of God, fill us with new life. We remember and thank you for the joy of sharing with others your good news. You gave us a vibrant, living gospel to proclaim and not to keep to ourselves. Help us to take out and share our faith online, on the telephone and with those we meet in our limited conversations. Inspire and challenge us as we try to live out your teaching day by day. We remember all who are part of our wide church family our new family, in the diverse congregations in our area group. May they always receive a loving welcome and find God in work we do in his name. May we all be wise stewards of our church and the inheritance we share as we move forward with our neighbours in love. We pray for our ministers and their families and we give thanks for all that they do for us. We pray for elders, board members, committee members, teachers of the young, musicians, for the old and young alike and for all in the middle. Help us to be united under the banner of God for the glory of your name, that we will never be embarrassed to be called a follower of Jesus and so attain at the last the wonder of eternal life, won for us by our Saviour Jesus Christ our Lord. We dare to pray. Lord, let the world be changed, for we long to see an end to poverty. We dare to pray, Lord, let the rules be changed, for we long to see trade bring justice to the poor, especially during fair trade fortnight. We dare to pray, Lord, let our lives be changed, for we long to bring hope where good news is needed. We dare to pray, bless us during this time of pandemic, that we may soon come out of lockdown and be together again face to face. We dare to pray, bless our nation, that we may be generous with the gifts that we have and share it with those in need from around your world. And in the strength of your spirit, inspire us with your compassion, that we make this promise to work for change and wait confidently for the day when you make all things new. We would remember those who are forced to become refugees, suffering loss of family, friends, livelihood, possessions and dignity, remembering those suffering the effects of famine, disease, intolerance, prejudice and neglect, remembering all the agencies that work to relieve suffering. Help us to be mindful of the differing needs of those we meet. Help us to be there when needed, sharing the high and happy parts of life and being supportive during the lowest and most miserable times we all experience. We remember all in special need this day and bring before you those ill at home or in hospital and those who care for them. We bring before you those who feel no one cares about them. 
those who perhaps are unemployed or the poor, the lonely, the depressed, and those suffering injustice and neglect. And we remember all close to death and those recently believe, bereaved. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For we ask this prayer in the name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, in whose words we pray together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as we go into this week. May God help us commit our whole selves to his care. May we follow Jesus even when we do not understand. And may we always trust the Lord to continue to do what seems impossible. And may the blessing of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may this blessing rest upon each of us and upon all who we know, this day and forevermore. Amen.